We know that the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. John chapter 10, verse 10. Jesus spoke this word. But I have come that they might have life, and that they might have it abundantly. This morning, the blessings of God that makes rich and add no sorrow is imparted unto you. The heavens are opened before you today. And the rain of blessing is falling upon you left, right, and center. You are wet, you are soaked with the, with the, with the blessings of the Lord. Everywhere you go, favor opens the door. Where people are stranded, you know what to do, and you make an edge way. You are succeeding, you are moving forward. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Today, I welcome you to this edition of I Prevail with Joseph Adenuga. Today, I pray and I believe that God Almighty who made you will do you good. God will take you from glory to glory. God will make you to shine in the midst of your enemies and he will give you the power to rule over your enemies. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Today, I want to speak on the topic which I said, the thief. You see, Jesus Christ, our Lord, spoke to us in John chapter 10, verse 10, the main purpose of the devil. The devil is called there the thief. And Jesus Christ, our Lord, said, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it abundantly. There are two principal forces that rules the universe. We know that God is the creator. But there are two principal forces that works. The force of good and that of evil. The force of good and that of evil. The force of evil is what Jesus Christ is saying when he said the thief. Commit not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So this tells you and I that every time something goes wrong, there is a thief at work. When there is calamity, pandemic, epidemic, sickness, disease, sudden death, poverty, loss, losses of all types, you know, we know that the thief is in place. The thief is at work. When things are going wrong, the thief is at work. And we have a duty as children of God. Our duty is to stop the thief. In my place, when you are a thief and you are caught, you are dealt with fortly, I mean, immediately. There is what we call jungle justice. If you are not careful, you still, they catch you, they will stone you to death. That is jungle justice, instant judgment. We have a duty to arrest the thief that has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy our lives. It is our duty to arrest that thief and say, you are not going to steal my children's health. No, you are not going to steal my job. You are not going to steal my husband. You are not going to steal my wife. Thief, I stand in the name of Jesus to defend my territory. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are hearing the sound of my voice this morning, God is speaking to you. It's your duty to rise up and prevent yourself from being barricaded and from being, you know, attacked and your things scattered away. You have to stand and fight. Jesus Christ said, But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it abundantly. And he tells us what to do. In First John chapter 5 from verse 11, he said, This is the record that God had given to us eternal life. This is the testimony, another translation says, this is the testimony that God had given to us eternal life. Records are, you know, the writings of the past, something that is already done. Testimonies are words to testify and to give glory to God for what already is done. 
This is the testimony that God had given to us eternal life. He's not going to give it to us. He has given to us eternal life. And the Bible says this life is in his son, Jesus Christ. He that have the son already have the life. Unfortunately, he that does not have the son does not have life. Do you have the son? Have you accepted him into your life as your Lord and Savior? Then I am happy to announce to you, you already have the life. He that have the son have life. You have life. But I have come that they may have life. You already have the life of God. He's not talking about human life. You already had that when you were born. But when you receive Jesus, you receive another life. You receive right now a higher life that is higher than the human life that your mother and your father gave you when you were born. God gave you another life. The life that Jesus promised when he says, I have come that they may have life. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they, which is you and I, that they might have life. And that they might have it abundantly. Abundant life is the joy of God for your life. Abundant life is the will of God for your life. Abundant life includes good health. Abundant life includes prosperity in material and monetary terms. Abundant life includes joy all around you. I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly. This is the will of God. That is why third John verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospered. Beloved, I wish above all things, above all things, this is the will of God, above all things, that you prosper. God wants you to prosper and be in good health, above all things. Number one thing God desires for you is prosperity. Because when he says above all things, this means this is God's priority. When we are not prosperous, we must check it. There is a thief that is working. We must rise and evade that thief. We must rise and attack that thief. We must rise and arrest that thief that has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy in our lives. We have got the responsibility to do something about it. That is why he says, Behold, I give unto you power. Now when he gives you power, it's you must do something with the power. It's like somebody giving you food and the food is on your table and you are still expecting that person to take the spoon and put the food in your mouth. The food is on your table. It's your turn to take your hand out of your pocket, take the spoon and begin to gulp that food. He's not going to put the food in your mouth because he has put the food on your table. Behold, I give unto you power to do something, to tread, to destroy serpents and scorpions. These are the thieves that has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus is saying, I give you power to deal with them. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the devil, which is the thief, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. God loves you. He gave you power. And for you to understand, in Job chapter 22, verse 28, he said, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. 
And for you to understand, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, it said, Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests unto God. Kings decree. They make command. They make demands. They, are, they have dominion. They don't struggle. They speak and their words must be obeyed. You are a king. You need to go after the thieves. You need to go after the thieves that have come to your life to steal, to kill and to destroy. You must not leave them and let them go. You know what David said? In, in First Samuel chapter 17, he was talking to Saul to convince Saul that he could kill Goliath. He said, I was washing over my father's flock. One day, a lion came and took a lamb out of the fold. He said, I ran after it and I smote it and I delivered the lamb out of its mouth and I killed it. And when Paul was surprised looking at this young lad, he said, no, that is not all. He said, another day, a bear came and took a lamb out of the fold. I ran after it and I killed that bear and I delivered the lamb out of its mouth. He said, your servant is going to kill this Philistine. God who delivered the lion and the bear to my hand is going to deliver this Philistine to my hand. God is giving you the power. You need to go and arrest that thief in your life. It's your responsibility to rise up now and do something. Thank you for listening. This is where I'm going to stop. Please rebroadcast this to your friends and to your loved ones. If somebody loved you, rebroadcasted this to you, and you love this message, you can just save my number so that I can be sending it to you directly. In case they fail to, to rebroadcast it to you, you can receive the broadcast first hand from me. And so if you are interested in that, save my number with I Prevail. Make sure you save my number with I Prevail. My number is plus 2774-0302. 381. Save it right now. Go to your WhatsApp and or Telegram and send me a very simple message to ask me to add you. Just say, please add me. And from tomorrow, you will receive this. You are able to receive this because of the partners of I Prevail. Thank you, partners. God bless you. Thank you again. It is well with your soul. This is your brother, your friend, your pastor, Joseph Adenuga, signing out and saying to you, be blessed. And remain blessed.